For today's webinar, we are being joined by Gaurav Sareen. He is a total tech buff and one of India's top chatbot and AI specialists. He is also the head of business solutions at Value First and thoroughly enjoys working with global brands and helps them drive their growth much efficiently. We'll be covering a few topics in this webinar, namely what is EKYC, the importance of it, features, how chatbots uh, can be used in EKYC and how has automation changed it. And then we'll be open to the audience for a question answer round. So Gaurav, you've been in the industry for a while and you've brought AI into the B2B enterprise sphere in this country. How do you feel the automation has changed and is changing the today's market. Thanks for uh, the lovely question, Namika, and uh, thank you so much for the introduction as well. I'm fairly, I'm, I'm merely one of the guys who's trying to propagate the use of AI in business. And uh, as much as I'd like, as you guys would like to call me a specialist, I'm still learning. The space is ever evolving. I feel, given the uh, way in which business is being run these days, it's extremely important that the business processes are automated to the extent that we can drive the maximum operational efficiency. And uh, with respect to that, chatbots and AI is going to play a crucial role in that direction. Yeah. Thank you so much for that, Gaurav. So why do you think, why chatbots at all? And AI taking over the market, as you just said. So why all of this, this new age tech? I'm glad you've asked me this question. So see, one of the most natural progressions of uh, technology uh, like we started from SMS, uh, we went on to emails, and then we've uh, spoken about websites and mobile applications. Yeah. To be fairly honest, people are getting a little sick of browsing and people are getting a little sick of calling in to a particular location to know their answers or to know about products. Yeah. They want something that they can help themselves with. And given the recent success and the recent usage of uh, WhatsApp and all of these OTT applications, people have gotten extremely used to Chatting is a user interface. The reasons being fairly simple, it's proactive, it is extremely engaging, grips the user's interest and helps them control the entire conversation, so to say. And hence, it only made sense that businesses adopted this particular uh, progression as well into their day-to-day -day businesses and how they run. Thank you for that, Gaurav. Also, I'd just like to remind um, our entire audience, this is more of an interaction. And please, everybody and everybody who's having a question, keep on sending us questions and we'll make sure that Gaurav answers them all. So, Gaurav, the, the government of India has taken a big initiative called Digital India. We all been witness a paradigm shift in uh, how we use our identity in order to load our document in EKYC. So, how do you think it's important and why? Thanks for the question, Odit. See, it's fairly simple. You want to move on to processes that minimize the friction points, bring in, usher in, usher in a sense of security and uh, bring everything to a common interface. And I think thanks to the Digital India Initiative, EKYC comes in really handy as it authenticates the user's identity, becomes a single point of verification for, um, you know, every sort of process that you want to sync with your Aadhaar card or with your identity. And also helps you bring in processes in place that reduce all sorts of identity frauds that have happened in the past, given how susceptible we are to such things in the online space and age. I'm sure uh, some of the similar problems must have been faced by our audience as well. So what do you think? How would chatbots actually assist in EKYC? How can they be helpful or how can they maybe automate the entire process? What is the thinking behind it? See, we discussed this in you know previous to previous question. Um, customers and audiences are looking at something that they can interact with, they can engage with themselves, and they can, can take control of the direction in which a conversation goes. So whilst they understand something as serious as EKYC, they would want to be in control of that themselves. And uh, what's more better than to be able to interact with a particular interface while they do that? So whilst you leverage chatbots for this, you not only get to upload the most important document that proves your identity, and sync it with uh, you know multiple databases, be it a bank or be it some other business process. You get to interact while you do that. You get to ask questions. All of your relevant profiles, all of your relevant processes that you have currently running, you get to sync that data with that. For example, through a simple OTP verification, I can identify who the user is. I can make sure that the correct user is you know uploading the file. By simply hooking up with an Aadhaar API and keying in an Aadhaar ID, I can identify that it's the correct user who's entering the correct detail. Okay, now, so Gaurav, uh, since chatbots are artificially intelligent, I met people and I've seen that they have concerns about uh, handing over their everyday activities to a chatbot. So how do you think that, uh, is it safe to use uh, chatbots with EKYC? 
Extremely good question. And I think uh, some of our viewers are also asking the same question. Uh, so see, chatbots are extremely secure, right? A lot's been said about it. A lot's been uh, you know published about the security about it. We're looking at some SSL level and HTTPS level encryption in terms of data privacy, in terms of security. Uh, secondly, when something comes to as complex as a KYC uh, and you uploading your Aadhaar card document or any personal identity document that you're talking about, we're looking at a process where we where we're not storing any sort of information or any sort of data on our servers or any third party servers. We're doing a server to server transfer. So the second an interaction has happened with the chatbot with regards to an intent of uploading a particular picture or your Aadhaar uh, you know, number, it is directly tra being transferred to the API that we're syncing with uh, or the server that we're planning to you know, transfer the details to. We're not keeping anything with us. Um, that's one of the key features that we'd kept in mind while planning, you know, the chatbot platform Servo, because we understood and realized that security and privacy of data is one of the most key aspects in this domain. Thank you for that, uh, Gaurav. I think one of our audiences also is concerned with the same question. And as you can see, you explained it beautifully. So one more question related, an extension of the same, I would say. Where do you say, where all can chatbots is currently, is currently being used in the BFSI sector? Are there ch chatbots being used? If yes, where, how, how would you say it? So see, one of the most optimum usage of this technology is, uh, you know, I feel any technology or any innovation is redundant. If it is not helping you drive an ROI or if it is not helping you usher in some sort of operational efficiency. So whilst we are approaching the BFSI segment, some of the most popular use cases that we've modified or that are being modified outside in the market are to do with product discovery. So if you pick up any particular um, you know, brand name in the market at the moment in the uh, finance sector, they want to popularize uh, the idea of their products. They want to have more and more users understand the product yeah. and how can users access those products, yeah. right? So a typical product discovery use case, a typical use case that allows banks and allows uh, most of these BFSI sector uh, you know, brands to generate leads. Right. Now, that's one side of the fence, right? We're talking direct business. We're, direct, we're talking leads. We're talking conversions. The second side of the chatbot usage is how can we reduce the turnaround time from actually discovering a product to applying for a product and actually procuring it. So operational efficiency come, becomes extremely key. Now, for every single query, I could I simply call a call center. Now, as a user, it's very simple for me. But if you look at it from the brand's perspective, yeah. every call is a cost to companies, a cost to business. The average cost in a contact center these days hovers anywhere between 40 to 50,000 rupees. With the help of a chatbot, your generic queries can be modified in form of an FAQ chatbot. There are several other technologies like a bot plus human uh, experience or your ability to latch on a call into a chat interface as well. Brings down the call volumes to only extremely customized problems. That way, operational efficiency is also taken care of. So these are the two most popular use cases that we've seen being asked for by the brands. And frankly enough, we've been extremely successful in it as well. Wow, that's, that's just lovely to hear. Yeah, so Gaurav, I've seen uh, people, you know, generally getting confused about the cost for a chatbot. So what do you think? What does it cost like to have a chatbot? And, and I'm glad that one of our viewers has also asked this question. Uh, it's, a, it's a fairly controversial question to be asked in the first place, but still I'll go ahead and try and answer it. See, there are several models in which a chatbot can work. One is that you can look at a specific process that you want to modify. And uh, once that need has been identified, uh, and once you've identified which process are you looking to modify, we can build a chatbot around that. So that's one way to go about it. And then there could be a monthly subscription charge to it. There are API calls associated with a particular process that has a certain fees. And a basic fees that comes into play when you're planning to build the chatbot and deploy it. So like a setup cost is another thing that we can look at it. However, um, nothing's set in stone, right? The only constant uh, parameter of defining a price for a bot comes down to two things. The level of integrations that we're planning to do with the systems to build the relevance into the chatbot, that is. That's number one. And second, how many interactions are we looking to consume or how many API calls are we looking to consume? So these are the two constant parameters around it. Anything beyond that would hover in the range of uh, the maintenance of a particular process or uh, would hover around upkeep or anything to do with customizations in a particular uh, chatbot that you've developed. So that's the kind of pricing models that are working at the moment. 
so god of i'll ask you something a little less technical here but i think uh, something something that i would also personally want to know apart from i'm sure uh, our audience so do you feel in your own personal way is india ready for such a deeply internet related concept such as chatbots and ai oh we're more than ready to be honest the reason why i say that is because india is a market and i i might add uh, you know uh, the fact that with the digital in- india initiative it's been popularized to the extent that it only makes sense for our businesses also to understand that indians are more connected than ever given the success of the 2g's and the 3g's uh, in the mobile uh, you know space we're looking at almost everybody getting connected to uh, the internet very easily so telecom sector is doing fairly well in that respect so uh, with that coming in place um, it only makes sense for us to devise easier ways to reach out to the audience now of course one very obvious uh, question for india as a market uh, comes in in form of regional languages right and what are we doing about it so imagine a scenario where you're not only leveraging internet or your web to reach out to the audience you're not only leveraging a chatty user interface to reach out to the audience but you're also able to speak to them in their language one of the one of the examples i'd like to talk about here um, a couple of days back i was speaking with a very major finance sector client of ours you know down in uh, in chennai they are planning to put together a bot in the in, in a regional language for their audience for a particular use case and i feel extremely proud and happy for the fact that yeah. we can support this given the um, vernacular capabilities of our platform so yeah. yep i think uh, india is more than ready to be on this uh, platform and, and just expanding yeah yeah all right so we have a very popular question we have seen this all over the internet and uh, global leaders have uh, enthusiastically they have made fancy predictions about it um, but i would like to know your opinion about this so what is your view on ai artificial intelligence taking over the world are we going to witness something like transformers or what sort of future that we are getting into i'm glad you asked this question um, i'm sure transformers are not going to come and take over the world anytime soon i'm sure terminators are not going to come and take over the world anytime soon see i mean ai has been a fairly overused term and to my um, i'm extremely sad to know that very less people actually know a lot about ai see when we talk about artificial intelligence the space is so vast that we'd probably be using certain modules of it as of now in our businesses modules like predictive analysis modules like um, you know natural language programming modules like machine learning or deep learning so to say whilst for us these modules are fairly big but ai is is a much bigger landscape that needs to be charted the usage of ai is definitely gonna pick up in time to come it already has started surge so it's definitely gonna pick up in time to come and more importantly it's going to solve more and more business use cases as i said it's it's not about ai or machine learning it is about how do we automate our current processes for a better operational efficiency so i think ai is going to do a lot of that and anything and everything that is logic related or that is object related uh, ai is going to play a crucial role in that no to transformers and terminators for now but a definitive yes to a lot of positive automation in business thanks to ai so we have this very interesting question from our uh, audience gaurav and so this has been asked by navin and he asks you to tell him a little more about chatbots and how ai works and how the entire platform is kind of integrated throughout uh thank you so much navin uh, for asking this question um so there are multiple layers to the question and uh, so i'll i'll try and answer it step by step uh, number 1 we'd like to believe that our platform is ready to a certain extent that it can cater to most of your business use cases when i talk about business use cases i'm talking about b2c touch points i'm talking about b2b touch points both so every business process has a definitive life cycle to it and every life cycle that can be mapped there can be a chatbot planned around it so the platform is ready to the extent that it has all the intentologies built all the response types built into it that you can leverage to build a process bot that's that's step number 1 so so it's it's fairly simple uh, the the uh, you know periodicity yeah. of it uh, yeah. you come up with a requirement you break it down into multiple processes you look at the end objective and then you plan the uh, chatbot as to how it's going to function and your platform can you know sustain that particular development as well now as far as usage of ai and is concerned in 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 this particular respect so as i said what we are leveraging is is a very small component of ai right we are looking at several machine learning modules and several um, you know nlp modules the intent is so for nlp we're using a name entity recognition uh, methodology where 
we're trying to categorize several intents, several objectives and intents, and we're planning to build rules and logics around it. So the chatbot should be able to not only understand your inputs uh, in the way you've given it, given to it, but it'll also be able to respond back to you in a human language, thanks to those entities that have been defined. So that's one way to go about it. The other way is how does a chatbot understand in terms of how to respond? So for example, if I put across questions like, how are you? How are you doing today? How's life? Yeah. Now, all of these three questions, however worded out differently, but have a similar connotation to it and have a similar objective to it. Yeah. Now, a chatbot, with the help of your semantic relatedness and several other ML modules, yeah. can be trained to put together multiple permutations and combinations of words and answer users, uh, you know, give an answer to users' query that will categorize in all of the three question types asked earlier. So that's the level of usage uh, that we're doing at, at the uh, in the in the moment, uh, you know, with our platform. It's mostly text related, but we're slowly graduating towards voice modules as well. I'm sure to be uh, we'll be keeping you posted about that development. I'll ju I'll just take a minute here to inform our audience that we'll be answering all the questions and sending them the entire recording of the webinar. So any question that we're not able to take up right now will be answered. And there's this another very good question being asked by Bhargav Gaurav and something related to similar what you've just been talking and he asks is are there any technical requirements for the system? Sure. I mean, so see, I mean, there are no fancy system requirements, to be very honest. Um, it's, it's a cloud-based solution. Um, all it needs is, uh, you know, an internet bandwidth to work on. That's number one. Secondly, we'd have specific system requirements or specific requirements or system dependencies when it comes to integrating with your internal uh, systems like your CRM or an ERP application or any other database that you want us to latch on to. So the platform can do it with the help of an API call. You know, for you to have relevant conversations, yes. we can identify who you are uh, given the uh, database that we're synced with. So if you're a current customer of a particular brand, and you have a unique identification code, like a customer code, so to say. If you key it in, the chatbot should be able to hit back an API and uh, should be able to identify who I am and uh, should be able to make the conversation relevant for me. And likewise, whatever interactions I've had, uh, if it needs to go back to a system for further processes to work on, that can be driven as well. So that's where the system dependencies come into picture. And that depends on use case to use case basis. Okay, so since we are approaching to our time limit, um, I would like to tell you our viewers that along with the recording of this entire webinar, we'll be sending a demo EKYC board to all of people who have registered with us. So you can you can have a deeper understanding of what we are talking about today. We are, we are really running short on time, Gaurav, but one last question that we would like to ask from you. Again, an audience question. Do you also implement chatbots for work, workplace by Facebook? It's a brilliant question. In fact, um, I feel that somebody in my team is leaking out these details because just the other day we were discussing about implementing, doing a you know, hard integration with the workplace because more and more brands are picking it up these days and um, we feel it's a must have. Yeah. So it's definitely something we're that we're... Correct, correct. And in fact, yeah, so, so it's, it's definitely something that we're uh, planning to uh, you know, integrate with. And I'm pretty much sure in the next release or probably release after that, you should be able to integrate with Workspace for your business processes. Thank you so much, Gaurav. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Anamika. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much, guys. Until next time, guys, we'll see you again in another webinar. This is me, Anamika Joshi, signing out. And this is Udit. And before we sign off, we would like to wish a very happy new year 2018 to all of our viewers.